Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we've got another Coach Jake video. And today, uh, this has been many times requested in the comments, in the stream chat. A lot of people have asked for it. And it's one that I've been particularly looking forward to myself. We are gonna review Striker's Tracer uh, and examine why he is so incredibly good at this hero. Uh, you know, when I think about insane tracers, sure there's a lot of them in the Overwatch League. You know, a ton of players have, have made their name on this hero. But Striker really does seem a little bit above the rest. He's a player who just manages to get things done when uh, it seems almost impossible. So today we're going to be analyzing this game uh, on Gibraltar of Shock versus the Fusion. Uh, and Striker, I've been told, has popped off here and plays Tracer the whole game. So I think it'll be a great opportunity to review and examine how Striker plays with his teammates and how he makes individual plays that uh, turn the tide of battle in the favor of the San Francisco Shock. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. Um, you know, while we look at the setup time, I want to just think about compositional matchups here. Um, I'm not sure Shock is going to keep this. Probably not going to be playing Roadhog here, but um, we'll see. Um, but what they're up against is an, a Mercy Ash comp with a Sombra. Uh, and of course, Winston Diva and Ana to follow up. So just thinking about this comp initially, my, my first thought uh, in my mind is going to be that Striker is going to focus the Mercy a lot this game when he can. Obviously, there's going to be moments he has to do other stuff, but the Mercy is the ideal kill target, obviously because of the res mechanic. Kill Mercy, um, and you're going to be way ahead in the fight. And Striker, he's going to have to be a part of any of those kills. There's pretty much no way Funny Astro is going to die, I think, uh, if Striker doesn't have a hand in it. So it's going to be up to him pretty seriously here. Right now, he's just taking a double blink to the high ground. Nothing too interesting just yet, but there's nothing really to do at this point, mostly because his team is low ground. He's going to lose his Zen, but this doesn't stop him from just going immediately to the back line. I love this little movement here from Striker and the way he plays this mid-game engagement because, oh, just look at this. Let's just go back and watch this again. This is a little detail here. I like the way Striker, not only does he make this play, which is to move under the enemy to where now the enemy Ash doesn't have a clear LOS on him, right? You know, down where he is, there's no way that anyone from the enemy team um, is going to be able to, to put damage on him. It's pretty much only the tanks he has to worry about. The great thing about Tracer in this sort of position, when you're fighting, the only damage that's incoming to Tracer is the Winston and the D.Va, is that Winston and D.Va don't have burst damage. Uh, I mean, they can if they like land on you with Winston or something, but there's no way Striker is going to be surprised by burst damage, which means that basically he's never going to die in this position. It means he can be aggressive and, and shoot at the tanks. And... You know, not only would the tanks have to turn around and look at him in order to, to put pressure on him, but he's never going to get bursted down in this position because, it's again, it's only that tickle damage from the tanks. It'll be very easy for him to run away to the health pack. And look at the subtlety with which he plays this. This is a little detail for, for the kids at home. Is While he's just shooting the tanks in the back line, look, he considers going to get that mega pack here. But the problem is if Striker at any point takes this mega, then he'll actually become vulnerable to a play from Fury uh, in particular. So what Striker is going to do instead of taking the Mega at 92 health, he's comfortable at 92 health. And instead, he's just going to continue poking the tanks from behind, being annoying, forcing Fury to use Matrix. And he just saves the health pack for if an enemy tank decided to go on him, he's going to run and grab this pack. But he won't grab it early because he knows there's no real threat on his life. 92 HP, it doesn't really matter. He doesn't actually need the pack. So because he doesn't pick it up, in this circumstance, it means he can continue to pressure because he's got it in his back pocket. And I think that is, is a really key, like what makes this first trade so successful. And he ends up never taking the pack, but that just that play from Striker there basically means Fury and Sato have to get out. They, they can't stay there. He's just going to continue shooting them in the back forever if they don't leave. Um, and not that, you know, Fusion were expecting to get so much out of that, but, but Striker makes the correct play here to force them back. Now he's just working with Smurf to force Cart. Not really much value to be gained here. But he is forcing Fury to make moves. He is inching this cart forward. And now he's going to wrap to the high ground here. This is the moment where he's setting up a dive. Oh, he's not actually. He's going back to the low ground. Interesting. Okay, he's pushing out the Sombra. I'm expecting to see him go for a high ground play here or be ready to follow up with his teammates. But, oh, look at that. This is actually really intelligent from Striker. Let's go back and even watch that little moment again here. As soon as Striker sees this, he sees the enemy. Look at it. I mean, this is an extremely strong defensive position. From, from the back line of Fusion. I mean, Fusion's playing this perfectly, right? This is where they should be. But 
for Stryker to actually get on this back line, he's going to have to like essentially triple blink on them from, from coming out on this corner. And, it, and it's so easy for Carpe to find a headshot or Alarm to find the sleep, right? There's no cover really to work with. This would be an extremely bad engagement for Tracer to come out here and just go for the back line. It, it, it's not going to work. So as soon as Stryker sees that the enemy is positioned defensively like this, he's just going to immediately back off and accepting that he can no longer fulfill one side of the Tracer role, which is dive the back line, assist your Winston, get kills on the Mercy that I described before. He's going to shift into his other mode on Tracer, which is clear the flanks and just create space for my team. It's not about getting kills. It's about forcing cooldowns, forcing movements out of the enemy team. And Stryker's decision-making is just so quick. As soon as he sees the defensive position, immediately he's coming back to the spot and just tickling the tanks once again. Here he's going to deny Hisu that hack pack, which is actually really important because it means that, you know, Stryker can continue to play in this area and use the health pack. And he's never exposing himself to Carpe's Ash, so he's not at risk of getting one shot. Instead, he's just constantly trading with the tanks at mid-range, which is not an efficient trade for the tanks. It's the best he can do here. Hisu does find the, the commitment onto Violet, so it looks like this fight is going to go the way of the fusion. But Stryker has generated a lot of value here, despite never really committing. He's just... He's doing what he can without giving his life up. Like he's staying alive constantly. And that's really important here. See, now that Alarm's rotated this low ground position, the, the calculus changes really significantly for Stryker. He's gonna go straight to the back line, grab the pills to be full. And now he's in a position where much more straightforward to dive. He misses the stick there, but, but now the dive is so much easier to execute, right? Because there's not that huge open sight line for Ash to worry about. And that's a great combo. He's got the assistance from Smurf. So even though the Mercy Pocket comes in onto Alarm, Stryker's backline presence has just really gained a lot of value there because it enables Smurf to make that primal commitment. But I love the way he forces Funny Astro, or he waits for Funny Astro to be in that low ground position before making the high ground play. If he were to dive into a high ground Ash on a Mercy, it would be extremely difficult to succeed. But he instead, he waits for Alarm to make a rotation, and then he goes for that high ground play. And the stick missed, sure, but, but the, the thought was there in terms of the right decision-making for Stryker. Now he's got this high ground control, which is always a good idea in Gibraltar. You should basically always take this position on Tracer because you can just jump in on anybody. And he's ready to flank the back line at any moment, but he's not going to go too early here. He wants to be supported by his team when he makes a play. So instead, he's just trying to find vision on the enemy. And now I guess he's going to go for this one on Alarm. Blinking around him. I like that he recalls early enough. Once Funny Astro comes to pocket, he recalls early enough to keep the high ground. So it buys him more time. And I think he's going to go on alarm once his recall is almost up. Yep. Oh, what a nice combo there with Smurf. Gets the DMAC and the recall on 4 HP. Absolutely disgusting from Striker. Very greedy, but but he's I mean he's just playing this to perfection right here. Forces a Matrix. One missed Pulse Bomb. Not really a big deal here. Oh, and Carpe is now isolated. I love that Striker. He's never getting over eager on one kill. There, Carpe. Nice punish from Carpe to come out of that stairwell. But he's never getting over eager on one kill on this tracer. Like he'll pressure one target, and if that target gets assisted or saved, striker's out of there. He's done with the fight. Like he'll go look for another target to pressure. Uh, he's only going to go for really committed kills when he has teammates around him, um, support to help burn through the mercy damage. And here, Smurf's going to recommit with the primal. I love this. Striker also went high ground in this situation because it meant that he could come to the ship position and assist Smurf in this kill, which is actually really huge because now that the Winston's dead, a Violet and Moth don't have to be so worried, and Ons is going to have a lot of free space. Once again, Striker's waiting. Oh, what a beautiful dive with Smurf there. Comes in straight from over Alarm's head. Honestly, a lesser player than Alarm would have just died there. Like, that burst was so fast. A lesser player would have just died and, and not even gotten the trance off. But this is a situation where, again, the backline from Shock is, like, really uncontested. So Smurf and Striker start to get really aggressive, and, and they just clean up the fight from there. But uh, it kind of all came down to Stryker being in that high ground position in the pre-fight. So, wow, this is so good. He's just going to have to suicide here. Yeah, he can't survive. Um, nice catch by Stryker. This is an interesting position. There's a lot of decisions to be made here. Like, one thing Stryker could do right now is set up in the high ground or set up in the flank. Um, that's what I would do in this situation. I'm kind of curious to see how he approaches it. Because I would definitely go for a setup on the high ground right now or so somewhere in one of these flanks. Like on, on in front of Striker, basically, like somewhere in that part of the map. I wonder if he'll go for that. Okay, he will. He's gonna probably take the stairwell. Like one thing you'll see a lot from Striker that I'm, that I'm already noticing as a really consistent pattern is 
if you think about Gibraltar as a map, one of the most defining features of the map is how many high ground, low ground situations there are. Like there's a ton of high ground on this map, a ton of like basically every point, every fight, there is some sort of high ground to be played. What Striker is always going to do is look to either be on that high ground preemptively or get there somewhere in the fight. Like he values it a lot that he can be on the high ground. The reason he values it is what is the same reason or, or, or if you like, the, you could understand why he's doing this. If you under, if you look at all these dives, he's making on alarm where when he's diving alarm, he's not just like running at the Zen, you know, he's not just like blinking across open space at the Zen. He's jumping off of high ground and like bombing into the Zen, like landing on the Zen's head and landing with a Winston. And that just makes alarms life so difficult because for a Zen, hitting a shot on a tracer who's running at you, even if they're juking left and right and stuff, is so much easier. And on top of that, it takes cooldowns to cross that open space. But when Striker initiates from a high ground position, he can generally do so without even using a blink. And if he does get pressured when he recalls, he's going to be back to the high ground. So he's not going to have to like force any more cooldowns after he recalls. So he, consistently, he's going to be taking high ground in these spaces between fights like wow philly's regrouping shock's just pushing the cart striker's gonna make a move for high ground it's like it's like clockwork for him he's gonna do it every time and in this case he doesn't want to get exposed because he'll get pushed so he's gonna just play as defensively and just hide basically he's waiting for carpe to make a move to the high ground or he's waiting for the fight to get initiated so that alarm might no longer be protected and he's starting to peak a little bit now getting a little bit interested in getting some vision but he doesn't want to expose himself here. It's really important he doesn't like get discorded or something. And look at this. Lands right on Alarm's head. Funny Astro, nice positioning to be right there. In this case, Striker recalls just a little bit late. Um, to not be back on the high ground. Like, you could call that like a minor error, but it's not really a big deal. Once again, Striker just staying on this high ground because... Oh my god, that's disgusting. But, but I want to look back a little bit and review this little moment here. This moment is like... Tracer is not really efficient in this circumstance, right? Like being a Tracer and the Winston's this far away, like Tracer does a lot more damage if she's like, you know, in this position and, and shooting the Winston. She's going to do like three to four times as much damage to this Winston. But because Striker is in this high ground position, it prevents Alarm from properly committing to these fights. Like look how conservative this angle is from Alarm. It basically can't, it doesn't get more conservative from th than this for a Zen. He's spamming the corner. Whereas Violet, look at Violet's position. Violet is like in the fight. I mean, he's like close range with two tanks. Like he's in this fight. And Hisu is in the low ground here, right? But the key difference here, Alarm is not scared of this Tracer. Alarm doesn't have, or sorry, sorry. I should say Violet is not scared of Hisu. Because in order for Hisu to dive Alarm, Hisu needs to basically just run around the corner, which is just terrible. Like it's not... It's, it's a really, really bad way to initiate on a Zen to like just run in front of him, right? It's, it's going to make Violet's life very easy. He's just going to have to start blinking very early in the engagement. So a critical difference here in Striker's position is that Alarm is constantly scared of the possibility of a Tracer jumping on his head. And because a Striker has this high ground control, it prevents Alarm from getting into the fight effectively. And it means Sato's Primal is essentially all on his lonesome, right? He has no real support here. And same, same is true for Carpe, right? Carpe... In a, in a quite a pass, I mean, Carpe's in a bit more of an aggressive position, I would say, than Alarm. He's still doing all right. But nonetheless, he has to be very far back. And it's all because they're scared of Striker diving them. Like, if Striker goes, they're in trouble. So they therefore cannot go forward. And that's what leads to Sato dying. So that's a nice little zoning play from Striker to be in this position. And now the dive finally comes to fruition. And yeah, it was because Violet found the Discord there. Violet finds the Discord. And now it's just mode cleanup for Striker. Doesn't even kill the baby diva. Just going to get the extra delay on her. So she's waiting for her to touch cart. Very nice from him. Now he's going to play this back point position. I think this is another strong position here because... Mostly because Ons has the high ground now, right? So because Ons has this high ground here. And, and like if you think about the map positioning from Shock. This is essentially a 5-1 split, right? If we go up... If we look at it like this, it'll be really easy to understand. Not, obviously, Ons gets this initial kill on Carpe, which is huge. But what this positioning from Striker means is that as the fusion players come out of the spawn, right, 
they have to worry about... I mean, there's five Shock players here, right? So imagine you're a Philly Fusion player. You're coming out of spawn. You have five players to worry about on one side. Like, you, you have to be looking at these players. Or Ons and Violet. Like, like this whole... This group of five players is just going to completely crush you. So you have to look at them. But that just means Striker, back in this other flank, he's never... No one's going to look at him. Like, they, they, they simply can't. Like, there's too much pressure from the other side of the map. So in this case, high ground is now less valuable than being in a backline flank. And even though this is kind of a weird position, it is still technically a backline flank because the Philly Fusion players have to look the other way as they come out of spawn. So that's going to mean Striker is going to be relatively untouched looking at this spawn. He goes for the YOLO Pulse Bomb here onto the Mercy, but just no touch. Oh, that, that's actually pretty bad from Philly. They could have touched us, I think, for sure. But... Um, Still, that fight was looking pretty bad for them because that position in the pre-fight was just so incredibly good. So, really nice positional gameplay here from Striker. If we think back of like what worked that round, like what can we take from Striker's gameplay and add to our own and learn from? Um, first thing is that he's looking for the dive, but when he cannot find the dive on first point, remember that example? When he cannot find the dive, he's going for the flank zoning. Like, dive's not available? All right, that's okay. I'll just fight your flanks. I'll fight... I'll challenge the tanks at mid-range on the payload. I'll challenge your Sombra, preventing her from hacking health packs. Uh, and I'll generally just be a nuisance applying pressure to the cart. And when eventually the enemy does split up with their backline, he goes back to dive mode. Um, that's like the first lesson I would say. Second lesson is consistently taking high ground in, the, in between fights. Like whenever there's a moment to uh, regroup and like, like let's say Shock won the fight and Philly's regrouping in the spawn and they're not really uh, in fighting condition then Stryker's going to be taking a high ground guaranteed. Even in that moment on second point, when Stryker died in the fight, he, he takes the time on the respawn to come back from high ground so that he can get to the ship and that he can aid his teammates in the high ground fight. So he's really valuing high ground constantly here, which is honestly a theme in, in every review I've done is like how important high ground is in, in Overwatch. But especially important for a hero like Tracer who has no natural way to take high ground with her abilities. So you need to be thinking about it in terms of setting up in the pre-fight. Same comp, but now Shock's playing... Let's pause this for a second. Now that Shock has switched to this Roadhog Zarya comp, which I'm not a fan of at all here, but um, now that it, it, this has this switch has been made, I imagine that Striker is going to basically no longer look for dives. Maybe if... if unless Fusion obviously is like down players or something. Like when both players are... Or when both teams are... are it's six on six. I, I imagine that Striker is going to react to this comp change by... Basically going exclusively to that earlier playstyle we discussed, which is controlling the flanks, challenging Sombra so she can't hack packs, challenging tanks on the cart. Like, he's not probably not getting a ton of kills doing that, but that's what he can do when he doesn't have Winston Diva dive support. So the threat on Alarm is therefore massively reduced, and Striker is just going to try to control space. That's my guess. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong and he'll just go for solo dives, but I, I don't think so. Now he's going to go contest Hart, getting a Zen Orb if he needs it. First kill on the Ons is absolutely massive out from Carpe here. That, that's really a clutch kill. Oh, and that double blink just to get out of range of the hack. Really well played. Like, Striker would have died if, <laughs> if that went wrong. I mean, he just gets hacked and died. Or, or gets hacked and dies if that happens. Now he's going to go back to the high ground. Look at that. Look at that. You stop contesting Cart for one second. Your tanks walk away. Striker's like, I don't have to be here anymore. Where do I go? High ground. Every time. Now you're back to cart. Striker comes back to cart as well. He knows the Sombra's down here. It's actually nice from Hisu to just hide in that corner for a bit. Striker didn't anticipate that play. Once again, see, like, this is exactly what I thought, right? Striker, he's just poking tanks and, and challenging people at mid-range. He tries to save his, his hog here, but to no avail. But he can't dive the back line, so he, he, he's actually not even looking for dives in the back line. He's completely focused on... Um, on challenging tanks like there that you can just tell how impossible the dive is here so he immediately backs out he doesn't even he doesn't like try to commit into a mercy zen ash yeah this is going to be first point here for philly but striker i don't think he's really made any mistakes here like he, he's played about as well as you could expect now he's touching cart because cap's about to come through now he's gonna try to just get out with his life violet is almost certainly going to be dead here but Striker did what he could. He contested Cart as much as possible. He tried to save 
uh, his Roadhog from the hack when it came through, but it wasn't enough. But consistently in this comp, he's basically no longer looking at the backline dives. This is a special case actually where Alarm is caught all alone. That's really insane shots from Alarm to keep himself up. If Alarm missed like one shot there, I think he would be dead because Striker would just commit on the kill. But that, the only reason he goes for the Zen dive is because Zen is all alone away from the Mercy and in a flank where it's hard to get support. That's the one time in this half that we've seen him look for the dive and it's because Zen's completely alone. It's like as soon as he sees Mercy, Zen, Ash together there, he doesn't commit. Sees him again together, doesn't commit. He might go for a Pulse Bomb here. He does. But no follow-up, unfortunately, on Dosado. This is why I'm not a fan of this comp from Shock, is that they're just lacking a lot of mobility. And Gibraltar's a map where the mobility is so valuable because of high grounds. But look how much Striker... He's just like never leaving the high ground. If he leaves the high ground, he's going to make sure that he can just recall back to it. Here he's going to leave the high ground because he saw Mercy fly away. And he forces Trance because of it. It's like he always has a very good reason to leave the high ground if he's going to do it. Now he might go for the Zen on post-trance. No, he's going to change for Mercy target. But she gets saved by Zen, so yeah, it's not going to be a kill. Staying high ground. Oh, his tracking is so good, but not good enough. He might die for this. Yeah, now he's yeah he's going to die here for sure, right? Yeah. Good attempts. I think if he killed that Ash, could have mattered. But yeah, okay, shock. Now shock switch over to the Winston Diva. They they give up on the Hog Zarya, which I think is the right decision, definitely. Smurf's gonna die because he got forward spawn. Unlucky. Doesn't really matter though. Shock is still gonna reset. And and once again on the defense, Striker looking at the high ground. He doesn't want to go to that high ground because it's not aggressive enough. But he's positioning himself close to the staircase so that he can in fact go to the high ground as the fight breaks down. Like if his tanks can die the high ground, he'll be able to follow up. But Sato is playing really well too to just zone out this tracer. So Sato is actually doing a great job because I think if Sato weren't here, Striker would be able to get very aggressive on the tanks. So Striker is just going to poke Sato for being in that position. Forces uh, Tracer out. Or sorry, Sombra out. That's a such a huge stick. Oh my god, that almost killed him too. But this is an extremely critical fight from, from Striker that he's challenging the flank like this. Like, oh my god. this We have to watch this again because this is such this is like such a game winner. Like positional play from Striker. Like, all right, let's go to the, back to the start of this engagement. So in this moment, because Sato is contesting the flank, Striker is not really ever going to kill Sato here, but he is going to farm Pulse Bomb on him and make Sato pay essentially for contesting the flank by farming a Pulse Bomb on him. But he's never going to kill the Winston in this situation unless Striker or Sato overextends and gets Pulse Bomb or something. But right now, Hisu is going to uncloak on him. Hisu has the same idea of fighting for this flank position. Striker, though, because he's playing as well, look at the synergy as well from Shock that... With Violet in this position, he's able to orb Striker and keep Striker in a much more forward position than the Tracer would be able to play otherwise. So there's, the key here is actually the coordination from Striker and Violet that keeps him healthy on Tracer and allows him to challenge this Sombra. Like, he's who plays this really well, but Striker would have just been dead or forced to recall really early if he wasn't Harmony Orb. So it's basically recall for teleport. Um, you know, a trade here, but Striker, he's still in position and he's still got the Harmony Orb here. So he's very confident that he can fight heroes, especially like tanks. Like the only heroes he's scared of when he has the Harmony Orb are burst damage heroes. And in the comp that Fusion's running, that is literally Ash and Zen. Those are the only heroes that threaten you. And Ash and Zen do not want to come to this low ground flank. They do not want to be here. They want to be on high grounds. They want to be in open sight lines, like spamming at rage, putting Discord out, you know, headshotting people on Ash. Like they don't want to be here. So Striker is very confident that with the orb, he can dominate this part of the map, and he's absolutely correct. That pulse bomb not getting eaten is absolutely huge. Because now that both tanks are low, like, given that both teams are running this, this Zen Mercy comp, Carpe just killed the Mercy. Like, even if, even if no one kills Striker here, if Fury eats this pulse bomb, I think Shock might lose the map, or, or lose third point immediately here i think i think that is actually how significant this pulse bomb is because the pulse bomb on Sato forces the valk to come in to save the tanks it forces bubble and jump out of Sato. it forces matrix out of fury it's like so many resources are being committed and what did shock pay for that privilege they paid a pulse bomb and a zen with a harmony orb that's that's what they committed to this play and so the, the dividends are absolutely massive here and now Smurf comes in because Striker calls how good this fight is, and the tanks are dead. Like, if if this doesn't happen, if Striker isn't dominating this part of the map, 
a kill on Mercy should should just win you the fight. It should just win you the the, the situation immediately. So really, really critical that Striker and Violet and Smurf make this play here. And then Funny Astro dies as well. The Valk. It's a nice play by Ons. And it's just clean up here. He's got his tanks coming in. Finishes off Alarm. But that, that flank fight here is, is just so critical. And we talked about how there's two modes to Striker's Tracer. He's got like, he will dive when there's an opening to dive and he has a good opening. Uh, and he has a good position. He has teammate follow-up. But if he doesn't have that, he is going to always challenge the flank. And that's just a circumstance where challenging the flank turns into actually just destroying the flank. And it's really, really important. Now he's going to set up in this hiding spot here, hoping for like a lucky, you know, maybe a Zen will come here alone and just get a free solo kill. But, oh, that's so bad, actually. Very close to canceling the hack. But, yeah, just a little bit too late. Unlucky. He gets caught by Hisu there. I mean, he did his best, I think, to try and cancel the hack here. I think he doesn't want to just recall in that situation because it puts him, he basically has no cooldowns. He can't fight. So I think he made the right play to try and cancel hack. Just obviously didn't find it in time. Kill from Ons is critical. Mech heavily pressured. That forces the trance out. The pressure on Fury's mech forces trance. Very big. Missed Pulse Bomb here. But still, the, the trance was very passive from Fusion there. It was basically just a defensive trance, which, which isn't what you want in this comp. Like, you want to be trancing aggressively. But because of the pressure on Fury's mech, they weren't able to do that. Now Sato is just getting hard DPS down in the primal. Bomb from Choi Hyo Bin zones away the assistance so that uh, Smurf's Primal can go wild and kill off that um, Zen, I believe. And it's just clean up here for Fusion. They're trying to find Hisu. There's a little spy checking action. And I think Striker is going to consider this left flank his home at this point in the map. I think basically against the comp he's up against, because there's no Tracer, he just feels like he can dominate this part of the map with the Zen Orb. And I think he's absolutely correct. I think this is a really, really great setup from Shock. Like the way they're playing the positional game means it's very hard for the fusion tanks to get close enough to dive. He's not going to expose this position here. Forces recall. Oh, what a huge kill. He knows where the recall is going to be. So he forces recall, uses his own recall to like get back in position. Unfortunately, gets headshot by alarm there, but that was a nice kill on the enemy tracer. This should be the end of the map here, potentially, or the end of defense because shock kind of falling apart. Violet just barely gets his trance up in time. That's going to be a game saver. Potentially. And Ons with that 2k. Okay, that's the game saver. He wants to stick here. Close shot. Not enough, though. I don't like this trance at all from Alarm. I think this is a really bad trance. I think he should have just given up the fight, but... Maybe? Nope. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <coughs> this play just kind of reeks of desperation from... Um, from a Fusion there. That trance was super desperate trance. They're already down two players. I mean, he Alarm built it incredibly fast, to be fair, but nonetheless. Interesting. Now Striker going for a flank of his own, completely changing it up in the final fight here, potentially final fight. I wonder if this is a good idea or not. I mean, I think theoretically it is, right? Theoretically, this is, like, if you think about the idea of Striker has, think about, imagine he's got two modes. He's got the flank fighter mode, and he's got the backline diver mode. Like, why would you switch from flank fighter mode to backline diver mode? Right, like you know, uh, Violet and Striker have been really effective so far playing this position, with uh, Violet, you know, offering the Harmony Orb from from a nice safe spot, and Striker covering the ground aggressively with that Harmony Orb. Like that's been a very strong map control play for the Shock. So the reason I think that they make this change is because they think they have ultimate advantage, and they know critically that Alarm doesn't have Trance, which means Alarm can be a kill target here. So I think the thought behind this play is that. They're going to jump in and just kill Alarm. But I think... I actually think it's not correct in this circumstance. Just because Funny Astro has Valk. And I don't think when it's Valk on Valk... I think you don't want to play a game looking for kills. I think you want to play a game looking for value when it's Valk on Valk. Because for either team... Diving into a into a grouped, uh, into grouped enemies who are getting Valked... Like, is not going to be really very good because Valk is a very strong defensive ultimate at least against stuff like Tracer Winston dives so in my opinion he actually should have just stayed and kept doing what he was doing here but I think the the thought behind it which is like is, is a good thought is that oh I wasted trance he doesn't have trance we can kill the Zen and go out plus one and we'll just win off the plus one like that's in my mind that's like the reason that's the communication the call that's behind this play but I think because Funny Astro has Valk 
perhaps that was not anticipated, but I don't think diving into a Valk is a good idea. I think it'd be better for a striker to just keep doing what he's doing and just trade, like, so, you know, zone out this part of the map and, and make it so that neither team can dive and just rely on defender's advantage for Ons and Moth to, to win out. But let's see how it goes. That's just my, that's just my idea. Okay, Alarm gets a huge opener. Striker can't go unless he's got support. Okay, they get the kill, but is it just going to be rezzed? Okay, this dive actually went insanely well. So, I guess I was just completely wrong. Actually, wait, no, the problem is that it's just not final fight. That's the real problem here. That you can still touch if you're fusion here. That's the problem. I guess this fight is still quite good, though. I was, ima I was just imagining this fight as the final fight, but in fact, it's not. Because you can still touch for fusion. You've got Bob, you've got Primal. You actually have great tools to make this fight last a very long time. So... While that play, actually, I was completely wrong, and Striker's play was absolutely correct, and the, the dive was great, and, and it stuffed Fusion really hard, I do think, well, I mean, it's, it's still a good play, actually, so I, we can't criticize Striker for that. that. That actually was correct. I was, I was the one who was wrong there. Unsurprisingly, Striker is a better Tracer player than me. Um, however, as I recall here, I think Shock's going to get over-eager. So that dive was good, but I think this is the moment where Shock gets overconfident and it ends up biting them. Because three seconds left, right? Yes, Fusion, they do have the ults to delay. You know, they've got a Tracer who can touch from this flank. They've got a Bob and a Primal. Well, 80 to Primal, but he, he can probably get Primal in one jump. Um, they have the tools to force an OT here. So in my mind, in this position, I think, and the Shock, I think they would agree with me if they were to analyze this, but obviously it's, you know, much easier to do this when you're fucking seeing all the ults and stuff. So I'm, I'm not criticizing Shock here, but just if you were in a perfect world, I think Shock at this moment would play extremely defensively. I think... This is the only place that Hisu can be to touch cart. So I actually think it's it's kind of a mistake to not check this flank. I guess Choi is checking it, but they need to maybe be even more aggressive. Like, I think if Striker at this moment had turned and pushed into this flank, I think it would just be game over immediately. Maybe not immediately, but it would just, Hisu would have to recall or desperation touch cart. It would have been really, really awkward. Oh my god, that alarm kill onto Ons is so ridiculous. That's like completely ridiculous that that comes in at this moment. That, that, that makes it all possible. That's actually what happens. But now this fight looks pretty bad actually for Shock. Because Striker's here, but Smurf can't... Like, just what does Smurf have? Smurf has jump, but he's only 300 HP. It's hard to get aggressive in this situation. Striker basically is going to need to get a solo kill here. And the beam comes in too quickly. Oh, no. And the trance comes in, but Smurf was up in the air, so he didn't get tranced, and the Bob killed him. Oh, this is going from bad to worse. So just a couple missed synergies from the Shock, and Philly are going to run with that. On top of that, of course, it's the clutch kill from Alarm onto Ons that makes it all possible. Which, I mean, there's so many clutches here in this moment for... For Philly, it, it's kind of ridiculous. They, like, four different players clutched at the same time. And they're going to win the fight because of it. But, wow, that fight was looking so impossible uh, for the Shock. Or, or, sorry, for Philly. It was looking so impossible. But Alarm just comes up with a solo kill on the enemy Ash. Like, you, you literally cannot do better than that. That's, like, the highest impact play you can make. And now, I mean, there's a chance. Like, you're not winning this fight. Yeah, Transvalk, yeah. Just clean up here. But, I mean, that was a pretty incredible fight, to be honest, from especially Alarm. Like, an opening pick there, there is just mind-boggling, honestly. Yeah, I think, I think though, if Shock had anticipated Hisu's position and pressured him earlier on, before OT started, pressure Hisu, Hisu there so that Hisu can't touch Cart, I think you would have seen a very different fight. Because I think... Had that one detail been different, and Hisu, maybe it was like if Fury had to touch card on the Wrecking Ball instead of Hisu, if Hisu got forced to recall too early and couldn't touch card anymore, then I think Fury would have probably just died solo on the cart. But the failure to, to push Hisu out of the flank meant that, like, Tracer getting OT is, like, probably the most ideal hero to force the OT because she can just recall out if she's in trouble, whereas, uh, like, a tank is going to actually die. But obviously, like, it was, like, the failure to push out Hisu... But if Alarm didn't get the kill, it wouldn't have been enough. And if the trance was on Smurf, it still wouldn't have been enough. 
and like you know what i mean like you're just like so many steps of like what ifs for fusion to have a chance at that fight so that was like a completely ridiculous fight for fusion to win but um really well played by them you got to give them props for that fight that that looked so impossible for them but they just found they found the way through a, an incredible set of obstacles set up by the shock but still your shock have a major advantage they're they're sitting on a huge time bank lead which is pretty significant on gibraltar it's not gibraltar is not a map you commonly see snowballed in ot because there's so much high ground, there's a lot of opportunities for defenders to reset, even if you cap first point, for instance. Especially in OT, you don't usually forward spawn on first, so if you do cap first, it's not so good. Striker, once again, he's in this mode of like uh, uh, um, pressuring flanks, looking at cart. He's not really looking for dives here because. When alarm takes a position like this, I mean, like what you, you're not gonna dive this, you know what I mean? Like you're just you're just not diving his end over here. He's, he's a mile away, and he's gonna get saved by his teammates too. So, striker plays this very intelligently. I like this moment of pressuring the flank too. Let's go back and watch it. It seems like a small detail, but I think this is actually pretty valuable to learn from here. Actually, wait, it was earlier. The moment when when. Striker pressures Hisu. Like he sees Hisu over there. Hisu goes inside. He knows where Hisu is, right? He knows Hisu's in this room. And look at the this little micro detail. This is like getting pretty in the weeds, but it's definitely a, an interesting detail. When Striker he's playing around the tracer reload time using his blinks here. So he comes in. He's gonna shoot Hisu in the back. But even before the end of the clip, I mean it's basically like one clip. He put one clip into Hisu and then he's gonna blink out. He's not gonna reload in front of Hisu. He's just going to blink out so that there's no opportunity for counter pressure. So Hisu, when Hisu turns around, like Striker's already gone. He's like a ghost, you know, he pokes you and then he's gone. So you, there's no opportunity to counter pressure and he has an HP lead and now he's just going to have to run away. Yeah, there he goes. Hisu's out of there, which is nice because it means this position that Hisu's in now is, is not as good as the right position because the right position offers an aggressive flanking potential coming up these stairs. But this position is like very passive from Hisu. I mean, he's going to be alive here, but he's not really going to be doing anything aggressive from this corner. Not really a big deal, but that little micro detail, you know, getting a little HP lead on the enemy tracer and a one-on-one -on, -one on the flank, sometimes it really matters. Once again, Striker just clearing this position, making sure there's nobody there, because if somebody were to be sneaking up these stairs, they would take a ton of pressure from Striker. They would like not trade favorably with a tracer and a one-on-one. -on -one. Basically, nothing in the game trades favorably with a tracer and a one-on-one. -on -one. So, um, certainly not in this game with these comps. So once again, Striker is going to clear that flank and then rotate back to cart, poke cart. Now Fury's alone on cart, so Striker's going to actually commit because he's, it's a one-on-one. -on -one, so he knows he can be really confident in that situation. Diva won't trade favorably. And oh, I love this. Absolutely love this. Because of that rotation from Fury to get off the cart, Striker knows that there's not really going to be heavy cart pressure for a minute. And that buys him a crucial 5-10 seconds to take the high ground. And that's been a consistent theme, right? But once again, he does it. He finds this little window. He doesn't just go high ground willy-nilly like, oh, enemy's fighting. I'm going to run away from my teammates and go high ground. No, no, he doesn't do that. He plays intelligently. He's like, he waits for the enemy to stop pressuring cart. And only when they stop pressuring cart and he recognizes he has a window of time because there's no more cart pressure that his normal job of defending the cart isn't, doesn't need to be done. That's what gives him the opportunity to go high ground, and he takes it. In the back line, being a huge nuisance. Absolutely love this high ground position here from Striker. This is really sick because this rotation that assuredly has been communicated by his teammates, that is very, very common on this map. You'll see this. This is like correct, I would say, from Fusion. Like taking this server control is... is extremely common like i i would say you see it 80 plus percent of the time in a situation where neither team has gotten a pick the attackers will try to take the server and you can see why it's a great defensive position there's a mega here in case you get dove you can you have a lot of cover you can even you know come out on multiple sides of this cover there's a lot of options in the server room so it's, it's a strong position for attackers it's a good move from philly but striker counterplays this move by getting into a very aggressive backline flanking high ground position so this replicates what we've seen a lot of times before, where Striker's in position to poke at mid-range. This is not really that valuable, though. But the bigger thing is that he's threatening a dive at all times. So the Fusion now have to be a lot more worried because they can't focus all their attention on this side of the map. They have to worry about 
not only you've got Smurf on one high ground, but Striker on an even deeper high ground. So if you look now at the whole map, let's see if we can like look through the ceiling of this map or something. It's gonna be hard. I'll just turn these on so you can see. All right. So if we if we think about like imagine we're in server right now. We're, we're imagine you are the Philly Fusion, right? This is your position on the map. Let's go up so we get a good view. So right here we only see the Philly players, right? Philly's got a pretty decent position in their back line. They're they're controlling the server room. They've got a mega to work with. They got Winston pushing cart. They've got a tracer over here ready to potentially contest high ground, controlling a flank. It it looks decent for them. But when you go further back, we can see that Shock's created a very nice concave here. So in any push that the Philly Fusion make is going to be met by an immediate counterplay uh, from the Shock. So if you were to push out right here from Philly Fusion and come out over here to the center of the map, you would and you would find yourself in like a complete surround. Like if you look at the setup, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six players. Like a full surround. Like the moment Sato's okay here, but if Sato finds himself here, like if he goes for a Zen, let's say, which looks attractive, right? Like a Zen alone, this looks like a very attractive dive target. If Sato makes that move, he's going to find himself completely surrounded and collapsed on. So this threaten from Striker, it, it really does a lot for his team. Now, because Smurf rotated off this high ground, Striker doesn't really want to be in the most aggressive flanking position anymore. Right over here would be like ultra aggressive, like behind the Philly Fusion. When Smurf has to back off to his teammates, then Striker he doesn't fully give up his flanking mission, but he he goes halfway. He comes to a position that's a lot closer to his teammates, more potential to come in and counter dive, less potential to attack the back line. But that makes sense considering Shock's position. Shock doesn't want to dive this either, right? Neither team I think can actually dive the other team's back line here. Both both of those plays would be met with failure. So instead, Stryker is going to rotate so he has a little bit more tank pressure to apply here. I would also not even hate to see Stryker play directly below where he is and, and be in this position right now. But he always has the option of going there from high ground. Like when you're on high ground, you can stay high ground as long as you want, or you could jump to the low ground. But when you're on low ground, that's not true. You're committed to being low ground. Like you can't go anywhere else. And because Stryker's high ground, like let's say if a dive comes in onto Ons, Stryker can still like triple blink over and come fight if he wants to. And in this case, he's actually going to completely back out of the flank fight. So he no longer now, he's basically completely giving up any hope of pressuring backline. But this is, if you notice why, why did he do this? It's because as I talked about before, as Philly Fusion make their move towards this Zen on forklift, as they make that play, Striker, that's why Striker has left the flank, is that he's now attacking the flank. And look at Sato. Sato's as good as dead here. So... Striker, he stays in the flank until such a time as the tanks from Philly Fusion get aggressive, and then he punishes brutally. He's keeping out of LOS of the Ash, and now he's going to go poke this back line because they're all alone. Beautiful pressure from Striker, the double melee, and it's all over. Shock make the hole. Really nice rotations from Striker, though. Like the way he postures on that high ground, it, it, it made Fusion feel pressured to make a play. But when they do make a play, he just collapses on the tanks. It's also really nice uh, 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 awareness because if you think about the position that Violet was playing on this forklift, one thing that Violet is not going to do effectively in this position is assist a, tra a tracer in the flank fight, right? Like if we think about back on last point where Violet and Stryker were working very well together, it was because Violet had a position where he could play defensively and still put an orb on Stryker while Stryker is being aggressive because they had that nice sight line to, con to maintain the Harmony Orb. But the, 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 the flank fight, I'll just talk about this while, um, while it's in setup time. It's not the same thing when the Zen is playing in the forklift. Because if Zen's forklift, pretty much the only position Tracer is going to get Harmony Orb is like right here in the corner, which is not really a good position, at least not before the fight starts. Like you don't want to be here at the very start because it's a little too easy to get pressured out. Like... The Ash could come, you know, peek from here and one-shot you or something. Or a Zen could even, like, no fear, walk out here and charge fire you. Or, or a Diva could, Like, you could get pushed out really easy is my point. So, because Violet is playing a position where he's not great at orbing Tracer, where Tracer wants to be, then Striker responds by just being a flanker instead. And instead of looking for the... Instead of controlling a flank defensively, he's applying pressure in an aggressive flank. 
and then waiting for the opportunity to collapse on tanks. Just clearing high ground here, making sure there's nobody waiting in the back lines for his um, for his back line. Pushing cart now, and oh, what a what an opener by Ons. That's really really painful. Funny Astro's gonna have to res here. So now you don't have a res to work with on Philly. You know, one more pick is basically the game. And Striker is just pushing card here. It's pretty much all he can do because his tanks want to be high ground. Not a high value play, I would say, from Tracer, but but what, just simply what must be done here. I think, yeah, Striker gets pressured. He's going to go straight to the server room, get his CDs back. I wonder if he'll even look at the high ground. No, he doesn't even look at the high ground. And because he knows, like, look at the setup. If you remember back to, la like, if I mean, this is just deja vu from, from round one offense, right? When the position, the defensive backline position is so strong here from Philly Fusion. Like these players are in an extremely strong defensive position where it's very, very hard to dive them. Like without completely dying and everybody, die you know, like you're just going to lose the fight if you dive them. It's, it's not going to work. Um, and because of that, Stryker just accepts, okay, there's no way I'm going to go high ground. Like there's no way Stryker is going to do this and triple blink on them. He'll just feed. So what does he do instead? Next best thing. Go, go pressure Cart from an angle where you cannot get pressured by the back lane. It looks like Carpe is even going to throw a dynamite here, which is really nice from Carpe, actually. This is going to put a lot of pressure on Striker. But Striker just accepts he's not going to be able to dive back line. What does he do instead? He's pressuring the people contesting Cart. And if they leave Cart, I think he's just going to go right back and start pushing the Cart again. Dynamite comes, but he's got the pills to work with. And now he's going to get even a little bit more aggressive. But because of where the golden box of victory is, he doesn't need to dive. He's just all going to be shooting tanks here. Oh, yeah. And it's just all falling apart here for Philly Fusion. They're getting just tactically outplayed here. Just amazing. That was, that was a beautiful offense from Shock. It was like they didn't even dive. They didn't even, like, make a play. They just, like a boa constrictor, wrapped around them and forced them into a terrible play where they're just feeding tanks. So if we, if we look back in review here, I think there was so much to learn from Striker's Tracer. Um, obviously, he has great aim and great mechanics, but like it's not like he's hitting every pulse bomb this game. Like I, In my opinion, this actually, in, in terms of just pure mechanics, was like far from the most impressive performance I've seen from Striker. Like he's had much better games. And if you were to think about the game in terms of hitting one clips and, and you know 180 pulse bombs on the Mercy, whatever, like if that's what you think about the game, there's better games from Striker. But what makes this game so good to watch, I think, is, is why he, is he plays so tactically around his teammates. Like, so much of this game was spent in a very defensive posture from Stryker. Like, not forcing backline dives. He, he made backline dives three, four times throughout the entire Gibraltar game. You know, typically, I think Tracers try to look more aggressive. They try to go for more of those dives. But I think Stryker makes the right call here in that... When he's, especially when he's playing Tracer into Sombra, he's the dominant fighter on the flank. Like Tracer will roll Sombra in a one-on-one -on, -one on the flank unless Sombra can get the hack. So because of that compositional reality, Striker completely changes his game plan and acts instead as, as a controller rather than an aggressor. Rather than trying to dive the Zen, uh, uh, he looks to just control the game and force the enemy tanks into awkward positions and poke away at them, especially when they're discorded. Uh, forcing especially mercy zen they don't have the best heal resources it's not they don't like healing tanks up it's not what they want to do they want to be you know damage boosting the ash and and, and harmonying the tracer that, that's how those heroes want to play so the pressure on the tanks was really well done the positioning on the map forcing philly into bad movements i think this was just a tactical masterpiece from striker like he, he really just outplayed them in terms of forcing them to make plays they didn't want to make uh another consistent theme from striker uh, uh beyond that first you know should i dive or should i control the flank uh, mentality that I think he has is, is that he's um, consistently retaking high ground whenever there's a moment that he's not forced to do something. Like if you stop pushing cart on offense, strikers on defense, okay, I'll go the high ground. You're not a push cart. The, uh, my job as the cart contester is not relevant. Okay, I'll just go high ground. Like we win a fight on offense. You're not set up to continue engagement. Okay, I'll just go high ground. Like that's his response. It's basically his default response. If there's nothing else to do, I will take the high ground. And I think that's a great way to play tracer because Tracer can do so much with high ground, and yet she cannot climb to high ground nearly as efficiently as other heroes, right? Like a Genji can just, you know, wall climb to high ground whenever he wants. It's super easy. Uh, uh, but at the same time, some of those heroes, like Genji, they don't get as much value from initiating from high ground. Whereas Tracer is like, you know, you can go in for that dive. If the dive fails, you can recall back to high ground and you're back in a safe position. Uh, 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 you can also attack something like a Zen without using blinks early. So you still have all your blinks to, to dance around the Zen and, and make him miss shots. Uh, 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 
and at the same time so it's just extremely efficient play to be on high ground and to be attacking the enemy that way not only is it going to make your aggression more effective but it's also going to preserve your own resources should you need to be defensive should you get pressured and focused you still have resources to deal with those things um and then another lesson to learn, I would say, is basically how he works with his teammates, uh, mostly Violet because it's Tracer Zen and there's like a lot of natural synergy there, but as well Smurf, right? We didn't see as much of the Tracer uh, of Striker plus Smurf this game because Striker was adopting this flank controller style rather than a backline diver style. Uh, if, you know, when you're going for, black, for backline dives, the critical partner in your team comp is your Winston and, and potentially your D.Va uh, uh, um, to, in terms of like actually diving in and getting those kills. But when you're playing the flank controller style, the critical partner is your Zenyatta because Harmony Orb is, is actually what matters in that circumstance. Um, so I think there's there's so much to be learned from Striker's gameplay here. Um, and I like this game in particular because it wasn't like, I mean, obviously he played really well and had a lot of big moments and big frags, but it wasn't like he he was just aim dueling everybody, you know, forcing 1v1s. That's not how he played this game. He, he played really tactically. And I think even if you're not as strong of a player as Striker is, which, like, let's be honest, like, none of you are. Um, <laughs> not, I'm not, so certainly nobody watching this video is. Um, then you can still adopt that tactical play style. You can still work with your Zen or the Harmony Orb on the flank. You can still uh, uh, find those rare openings where a backline dive is appropriate. For instance, when the enemy Zen has no trance or the Mercy's out of position, uh, you can find those moments. But the, the themes of playing with your teammates, consistently taking high ground when there's an opening to do so without, you know, leaving your team in the lurch, uh, 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 and um, you know, switching between the flank pressure and backline diver styles to find most effectiveness. Those are all lessons that anybody can use, I think, and employ in their tracer gameplay. Um, so thanks for watching, everybody. This has been the Striker Tracer Review. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, check out more content, check me out on Twitch and everything. Uh, thanks for watching.